Hi and welcome to another short video about linguistics. Today we are going to study the uh, language and the brain, chapter 12. So the field in linguistics known as neurolinguistics. Well, so simply speaking, neurolinguistics is the the field of linguistics that study the relationship between language and the brain. Well, so neurolinguistics is related to investigating how language is uh, comprehended in the brain and then how uh, the production occurs in the brain as well. So the brain has two hemispheres. Hemisphere means in Arabic fuss. So um, there is the left hemisphere and there is the right hemisphere. The left hemisphere is generally responsible for processing language, math, and logic, while the right hemisphere is responsible for spatial abilities face recognition, visual imagery, and music. Well, so if you see in this figure, the four main parts that participate in the comprehension and the production of speech. The first one is called Broca's area. The second one is called Wernicke's area. The third one called acute, fasciculus, and the fourth one is motor cortex. Well, so we shall begin with Broca's area, and this area also called the interior speech cortex. This area in the left hemisphere of the brain is responsible for the production of speech. Damage to the interior speech cortex or Broca's area can result in difficulty in producing speech. Language ability must be located in the left in the left hemisphere. Okay, so the second part called Wernicke's area it was discovered by a German doctor. It is also called posterior speech cortex. This area in the left hemisphere of the brain is responsible for the understanding of speech. Any damage to this part of the brain will result in speech comprehension difficulties. Another part is called the motor cortex, which is responsible for the physical articulation of speech. It controls movement of the muscles, moving hands, feet, arms, etc. The close part to the Broca's area is the part of the motor cortex that controls the articulatory muscles of the face, jaw, tongue, and larynx. The fourth part is called acute fasciculus. It is a bundle of nerve fibers. It actually connects the Wernicke's area and Broca's area. You can see this part in the figure in the slide. So there is a view called localization of view. This view in fact states that specific aspects of language ability have specific locations in the brain. So the brain activity, hearing a word, in order to hear a word there is a specific part of the brain responsible for that plus understanding it another specific area, followed by saying it, it requires another specific area located in the brain responsible for saying words. Well, there are two kinds of malfunctions in the brain. Malfunctions means disorders in the brain. First one is the mild one and the second one is the severe. The mild one is when the tip of the tongue happens, slip of the tongue or slip of the ear, while the severe ones results in a damage to the Broca's area, Wernicke's aphasia, and uh, conduction aphasia. 
We will discuss each of one in the next slide. Well, tip of the tongue means you know the word, but it won't come to the surface. Malpropism, it is named after malprop. It is the misuse of a word for another one. For example, distinguisher instead of extinguisher, meditation instead of medication. With tongue slips, changing the sounds and pronunciation. For example, spoonerism, the interchange of two initial sounds. For example, you have hissed all my mystery lectures instead of saying you have missed all my history lectures. Chish and fibs instead of fish and chips. This is very interesting, in fact. Preservation error carry over a sound from one word to the next. Black blocks instead of saying black books. Or anticipation error when a sound is brought forward. So nomen numeral instead of roman numeral and so on. You could just go over these more examples. With the slips of the ear is the opposite of the slip of the tongue. So here you mishear of the word. So somebody says great tape, you would just miss hearing the word great ape. Okay? And so on. You could just go over these more practice and examples. One of the problems that happen to the human beings concerning language production and comprehension is what is called aphasia. Aphasia is an impairment of language function due to brain damage. This will consequently lead to difficulty in understanding and or producing linguistic forms. Just like these um, examples. So, alexia is difficulty in reading. Agraphia is difficulty in writing. While anomia is difficulty in using proper nouns and words. So, there are different kinds of aphasia according to the place or the location of damage in the left hemisphere that is responsible for language production and comprehension. Uh, the first one called Broca's aphasia. Characteristics of this impairment include reduced amount of speech, distorted articulation, slow and effortless speech, comprehension is better than production. Well, so another kind of language impairment is to uh, the Wernicke's area. Wernicke's aphasia, in fact, characterized by the following. First, difficulties in auditory comprehension, difficulty in producing fluent speech or understanding, as well as difficulty in finding correct word. Another kind of aphasia is called conduction aphasia. This is characterized by damage to the acute fasciculus area. It is characterized by mispronouncing words, poor repetition, while comprehension is normally good. Well, another concept that is discussed in this chapter is called dichotic listening test. It is an experimental technique that has demonstrated a left hemisphere dominance for syllable and word processing. This technique uses the generally established fact that anything experienced on the right hand side of the body is processed in the left hemisphere and vice versa. So anything on the left side is processed on the right hemisphere. So this diagram or figure explains the dichotic listening test. Anything experienced on the right side hand it is processed by the left hemisphere and vice versa well so generally speaking the right hemisphere is responsible for processing non-linguistic non-verbal signals like music coughs traffic noises bird singing while the left hemisphere is dominant for language sounds 
And this is also supported by what is called right ear advantage. So the ability to perceive language better in the right ear from the left ear. Why is that? Because if you uh, receive things from your right ear, it is processed in the left hemisphere directly, which is responsible for language production, comprehension, and so on. Well, so now we discuss the critical period, or as sometimes called sensitive period. This period begins by birth until puberty, when the human brain is most ready to receive input and learn a particular language. In fact, language acquisition is difficult after this period. Why? Because lateralization has already occurred by this time. Well, now the case of uh, Jenny, the girl who spent her life in a state of physical, sensory, social, and emotional deprivation. She is a girl who was kept by her father away and was not allowed to communicate or receive uh, any language. So she has no language during the critical period, communicating after the puberty, uh, using the right hemisphere of her brain for language functioning. The left ear advantage for verbal as well as nonverbal signals. Well, so in Jenny's case, tests demonstrated that she has no left hemisphere language facility. What did she do then? She was using the right hemisphere for, of her brain for language functions. Well, so in Jenny's case, when she began to use speech, it was noted that she went through the same early stages found in normal child language acquisition. Uh, began by acquiring letters, forming words, and acquiring um, grammatical rules. Well, this is the end of this chapter. Thank you for listening. Hope to meet you in next episode. Bye.